All right. He wants to even... recap last session. <laughs> Barber's diary <laughs> time. <laughs> oh, right. You're so upset. <laughs> Dear diary, I I did a bad thing today. I thought I thought I was hurting the right person, but I don't know if I hurt the right person. I we were looking for there were there was a hospital, but we didn't take him there because he was already dead, and his mom wanted him to come home. I I I trust socks. And then he's just shut he's going to shut the diary. He like he's upset. He can't Aww. fathom his emotions right now. He can't to uh finish up Clubber's statement. <laughs> 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 After the fight outside the Oracle, Socks and Clubber had a heart to heart about family. And now we're about to uh break in. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, and uh let's see here. Co Cosmo was a very helpful boy, and not only did mm -hmm. he gather DNA for a potential a potential manhunt later oh, on right. down the line, uh Proud but he did very kindly blow all the blood and guts off of you oh my so gosh right you could at least uh you know maybe pass inconspicuously through the hallway uh but yes your search for Hasib did lead you to a medical bay where you learned that he sort of checked himself in with his eyes basically melted out of his head um and then started muttering some insane shit about going to see the oracles down at the nucleic temples so now you are trying to make your way there and find your way in. So, with uh, these unfortunate souls who wanted to turn you over to the Blue Widows, now fully and violently dis dispatched, um, you continue down the corridor until you reach this bright red sign that illuminates the hallway. And it says, this way, followed by an arrow that points to the end of the hall. You get the sense that you have finally reached the nucleic temple. Oh. You approach oh boy, the two metal go. doors, um, which are lit by fluorescent lights that have been hung sort of haphazardly all around the door frame, and two imposing guards stand on either side. You're still a good distance away, uh, but you see that they at least appear to be humanoid, but with some sort of strange armor covering them from head to toe. Um, even at this distance, you can see that it glistens really bright red and fits almost like a second skin. Um, and you hear them sort of chatting with each other um, as you enter this part of the hallway, which is noticeably dimmer and darker and much more abandoned uh, than the rest of level 99. So... <clears throat> One guard says to the other, hmm, you know, I thought they were meant to be here by now. And the other one says, yeah, those goddamn maintenance crews, they're, they're never reliable. But, I mean, you've seen who they're working for, right? That guy's out of his fucking mind. And you understand that they are, or at least appear to be, waiting for a maintenance crew to arrive. Are there spots, like, along the hallway that we can, like, duck behind? Or is it just, like, flat walls all the way down? There's, like, like kind of... There's some general Hold debris. There. There's dumpsters. This is, like, uh, imagine a hallway that no one gives a shit about. So they're just, like, dumping trash back there because they don't want to take it all the way to the waste management level. Uh, you know, there's, yep. there's boxes that have been left everywhere. There's probably some piping. Uh, and it's not super well lit. Um, the only sources of light that you have are the red neon sign behind you, and then the fluorescent lights that are illuminating the doors in front of you. Okay. So it doesn't seem like they know that we're here yet. No. They, they um, are just chatting. And wondering when this crew is going to show up. Uh, Clubber is going to look down at Socks. Socks, are, are we the maintenance crew? No. Um, why do we, 
what are we gonna do um, what if we do like a deception thing and pretend to be the maintenance crew so we uh, could get through i'm not very good at fixing things i kind of only break them you guys could probably try and do that and then i can well, we could just you. tell them that we can then they, they won't know if we try and fix anything what you do you go think, Sass? You could cat form and try and sneak by them. That's or distract true. them. Because you could probably get away from them pretty quick in your cat form, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Excuse me, Cosmo? Like yes? Do you happen to have some wrenches? Hmm. Then he sort of, you hear his little arm twirling and like a couple of bolts come flying out here and there. He goes, well... Not any that can't be detached from my body, but here. He, like, takes an attachment. Uh, one comes out of his arm. It looks something like a hammer, and he just sort of rips it off. He just <laughs> rips this shit off, and he hands it up to you. He's like, will this work? That'll be fine, friend. Thank you. You're welcome. And then he, like, retracts that little arm that is now broken, and then his regular arm comes right back out. Socks, I have a wrench. I can pretend to be the maintenance. Yeah, yeah we could I mean, uh, I don't see make Clubber pretend to be happen? that. And I could go in my cat form. See if yeah. I can sneak by see the if you door. Can see if anything's back there. I mean, from what we heard in the med bay, they're not going to like me that much. So, I mean, I, I guess promise I will not let you down. Clubber, you gotta promise Cut. me one thing. Yes, Socks. You won't call me out. While you're up there, you can't call for me. Because I gotta pretend I'm not here. Because they might not like me. They might know that you're not actually the maintenance crew. Socks, also, I don't have your phone number. <laughs> you can't yell my name. You can't say, hey, Socks. Or, my friend Socks, back there, is a big rabbit. Right? Uh, yes. Okay, so socks does not exist until we get through the doors. Yes. Got it. Wait, who, who, like, it, Clubber's gonna get very serious and, like, lean in very close to socks. Who, who, who will blow the whistle if I have to do something? If you have to do something, I will show up. Because then I will know it is fight time, and then I will tell you it is fight time. Okay. Because okay. I'll watch. I'm not going to leave. I'll watch. But I got to hide. Okay. You've got this, Clubber. Cosmo over here is this exchange. And he, is, as always, in an attempt to be helpful, he goes, from, from my limited understanding, I don't believe that they would be upset about an animist being a maintenance person simply because they don't respect them. Cosmo, you might be onto something. What, Clubber? What yes. do you think? Uh, I, I, I respect you, Socks. That is, that is, that is good news. All right, let's just try and be the maintenance crew. Do we all agree? Is that? Yep. Is this, is this what we'll do? Mm-hmm. All right. Clubber, go convince right. them. Um, I will start walking towards, uh, the guards. All right. So as you approach... Um, you start to see that whatever armor they're wearing does not look like any armor you've ever seen. It looks like their flesh has been turned inside out. Um, and they both sort of watch you approach with a single really large eye that gazes out at you from a gap in what appears to be the faceplate. They move in front of the door and spread open their hands in what appears to be a gesture of welcoming. And they say, in unison, the Nucleic Temple welcomes all its children. Do you seek entry to commune with the Oracle? I I seek entry to fix your water heater, and then I'm going to hold up the arm. <laughs> we are, we're in the maintenance crew. <laughs> we're the maintenance crew. <laughs> They, one of them actually like rolls his very large eye in a, in, a, in a rather grotesque fashion and says, Oh, finally, we've been waiting forever. Sorry, we Go got... ahead and roll me a deception check. 
Okay. All of us? Um, we will have... I'm guessing... Whoever wants to make the roll can make the roll. And then if the two of you help, we'll roll with advantage. I have rolled I will, a 21. I, I will help, but I don't think Clever needs it. No, no. They, um... <laughs> a natural 20. <laughs> they say, uh... They immediately open the doors for you. And they say, well, go ahead in there. Uh, maintenance men is that way. Just look for Gilbert and you'll know you're in the right place. Will do. Thank you. And as you pass through, you actually notice that these two guards are chained to their station. Oh. Well, that's creepy. Kinky. I keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> Sox yeah. is not going to get into that. Cl Sox Clubber... knows. Clubber's about to ask questions. And he's just like, don't say anything. <laughs> Cl Clubber is actually going to, well, look at them. He is going to tip a hat that is not there and then walk through the door. <laughs> the, God will, just... the guard will simply nod to you and return to his post. So the doors to the, <laughs> the doors to the temple swing open and you step inside. The inside actually looks a little bit more like a stalactite chamber than it does any man-made construct. There's actually a very strange mix of... Very clearly man-made, like, columns and furniture and features. And then these stalactites that are coming from the ceiling. Stalactites that are start starting to form on the floor. And just basically entirely unidentifiable organic substances that are uh, sort of spread in various places along the wall. The ceiling seems impossibly high for how high the rest of the ceilings are on this level. And the room smells of earthy musk and incense and something vaguely chemical that you can't quite identify. The entire temple, this, this art is going to be very small, so I apologize, but no, that's good the pain. entire temple is lit by candlelight. But there's a second source of light in the center of the room. It's a Ooh. really large fountain filled with a glowing green liquid. In front of the fountain is an ornately carved pulpit. And from this distance, you're able to see three figures standing in this pulpit, but you can't quite make out any distinguishing features from this distance. There are four people kneeling at an altar in front of the pulpit, and they appear to be in deep prayer. There are many other temple members spread out across the pews that stretch to the back of the room, and they're murmuring to themselves. Um, the three figures in the pulpit take notice of you as the doors swing shut, and they all say in unison, Welcome, children. We are blessed to have you with us. Please, make yourself comfortable in our holy sanctum. And the only other person you see in this temple besides these three figures and the various hooded acolytes is, is one very uh, hunched old man uh, who seems to be messing with a sort of maintenance duct and kind of grumbling to himself. All right, well, hmm. that was uh, easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, should we go to the maintenance duct or what? Should, Can you tell us you what do? it is that we need to fix for you? Well, I think we have Are to we... go up to Gilbert or whatever his name is and ask him. Hi. <laughs> what up? I, I mean... What? Yeah, let's go. We're here. What? Who knows? Maybe we'll figure something out. Whatever. I will follow your lead, Socks. Okay. Kiara? Yep. I what do you... What do you go up there and... You know, just figure out what's going on here. I mean, if it's a duct, I mean... You could probably fit in there. <laughs> if you gotta it's get true. something out. Uh, so, okay. Socks, let's... if it's a duck, you can have another animal friend. You're right, Clubber. Yep. I'm we can make start, eggs. I'm just going to start walking to the duct. <laughs> I'm going to follow Socks. All right. How how do, you, how do you approach Gilbert? I'm just going to go, excuse me. Hello. Sorry. He's bent over and like rummaging through some junk that's outside of this duct. And when you approach, when he hears you, he actually startles a little bit. He jumps. He goes, nah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, didn't mean, uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I uh, didn't mean to scare you. I'm sorry. I, I, how? <clears throat> How can I help you? We're I'm going to use uh, Cosmo's hand to wave. 
we're here to help <laughs> you with whatever's going on with this. He sort of eyes the three of you. And he lifts a finger, very bent, very crooked, and his nails are unusually long. And he goes, hmm, you're not my crew. I'd know my crew anywhere. But none of my business. We, we do have and he knowledge. Goes back to digging through his We're tub. not your crew because we're better. Hmm. Interesting proposition. Are you good at finding things, perhaps? Oh! Yes! <laughs> Socks just, like, steps back. He's like, Clover is going to take the lead here. I'm just going to mm -hmm. back up and take a little gander at what's going on in this temple. And uh, so Gilbert, he he stops rummaging for a moment. He goes, excuse me, I got I to gotta take a seat and uh, rest these old bones. The knees are what they used to be, you know? So he sits cool. down among the rubble that he was just digging through. And he goes, ugh. That's better. I'm, uh, I'm looking for a bottle of hooch that I hid in this temple many, many decades ago now. Uh, the little problem is old noggin ain't what it used to be, and for, I don't remember where I put it. You're what looking for a, a bottle, bottle of, of alcohol? Yeah. What is yes, that? Yes, yes. You, 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 call, uh, you called us to help you find a bottle of alcohol. I Whoa, can do I, this. Why? Goes let 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 me back up a moment. So, I'm Gilbert. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. He tips a hat that is not there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he sort of starts to like tap on his knees with his long creature nails. He goes, "I actually uh, I used to belong to this temple. You see, uh, very in the very very early days before um." all of this and he just sort of gestures towards the three figures in the pulpit uh but he says and 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 you know it's uh, every now and then i come back it's nice to see a familiar face and and they've sort of left me in charge of temple maintenance uh you know it's not it's it's a living um but you know i uh I'm an earthly man, and I enjoy earthly pleasures, and I just cannot remember where I put that goddamn bottle of hooch. Do you remember what the color of the bottle was? He sort of taps his face for a second. He goes, I believe it was green. No. Maybe blue. Hmm. Maybe clear. How about, you know, let's... We'll say, you know, we'll give you a hand. We got, you know, Kiara here can turn into a cat, so we can get in small places if we need to. Mm -hmm. um, but turn we'll into give a, you a cat, hand. you say? Yeah, she's cool. Um, But we'll give you a hand if you can give us a little bit of information about this temple. Oh. I don't think we've ever actually been down here. Anything. Anything. Do you want to know how these, how these formations got here? Would you like to know uh, where this maintenance duct leads? I would who, like would to you, know where the there. bottle is. Right. Yeah, who are those <laughs> figures? Clubber, you look for the bottle. <laughs> okay, so Clubber is going to walk away from the conversation, and what he's going to do is he's going to apply the same concept he uses in word finds to find the bottle. <laughs> so uh, along the border of the room, like the whole temple thing, he's just going to move one foot, and then he's going to look up, he's going to look down, and he's going to look up and he's going to scan it. And then he's going to move one more foot down and he's going to do the Good same cool. thing around the whole thing. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just very cool. slowly. Okay, so that's going to take him a while. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so while while Clever is off doing that, uh, Gilbert actually, uh, he kind of giggles watching him do this. And he goes, uh, <clears throat> well, as you know, I'm Gilbert with a Y and two L's. And those three are, well, that's the oracle and her, her seraphim. And that's all he says, as though that fully explains the entire situation. Cool. Uh, I kind of had a feeling that that was, um, the oracle. Uh, what do you... I don't want to sound kind of silly or anything, but, you know, 
my rabbit brain isn't the greatest, so I don't fully remember everything I learned about the Oracle, you know what I mean? Uh, so, like, could you give me, like, a, a, a brief explanation of, like, the Oracle and, you know, what the Oracle, you know, is known for and why Did people love the Oracle? He interrupts you. Things. He's a very rude man, uh, and he doesn't have a lot of time for, for nonsense. Uh, he goes, oh, I, I barely remember what I had for breakfast. I can't blame you. So, he claps his little hands together. Um, and he goes, well, this temple used to be uh, a sort of haven, as you might say, for, for folks like me, for the altars, for the people who, you know, whose genetic makeup is changed forever, often against our will, per se. I hear that. And he says, but, um... Uh, who remembers when? Who remembers why? Who remembers how? Certainly not me. But, um... Just slowly over time, these... These, these altars kept getting... Uh, stranger and stranger. I don't like to talk about my own kind that way, but... It just got strange. We started seeing more and more mutations, and... <laughs> I love what Clumper's doing right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, you know, we just started to see more and more mutations, and 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 these three, and many many others, and 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 some of our other temples. Uh, it 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 was almost as though the more altered you were, the holier you were. They came up with this whole idea of climbing the genetic ladder, and they started doing these insane rituals, and I personally wanted no part of it. Um, still wanted their money though. So, I left the church. I used to be clergy, but I left the church when, when the when the three of them rose to power and and the many others like them, and uh, decided I would just maintain the temple instead. It is still a safe space for many, um, but it's not what it used to be. I see. I you said weird rituals. Like what kind what kind of rituals? I don't I don't quite understand how you know rituals could be weird, you know? Ah yes, the, the ah, well they uh they came up with this thing called the Ascension. You see, they're actually about to begin one very soon. I you should stay and watch. We will. I'm I'm in, I'm interested to find out more um about this. Is the you know, ritual I... gonna be on? Whoever decides to step forward, it looks like many of these sitting here today will take part. I immediately look at Clubber and I know I'm going to hold that guy's ass back. I'm not letting <laughs> him step forward. Uh, he goes, so, so, if you're not here to help me clean the maintenance ducts, why are you here? Because you, and he points at you, Sox, he goes, you know, you should not be in this temple. I know. I know. I know. I heard that, you know, my kind aren't, you know, liked down here for some reason. To um, put it lightly. Do you know why? By chance? It's because you were born and not made. Wow. Well. Yeah, you're right. I I was born a rabbit, but I was made into this monster, and I point at myself, trying to be like, dude, I don't want to be like this either. I get you. Trying to, like, empathize with it, like... He said, uh, I, I, I personally have never cared for the delineation. I believe that uh, uh, genetic strangers is a genetic strangeness. Who are we to decide what's better and worse? But they get uh, so finicky about it. That, you know, it happens. I'm, there's, there's probably a temple somewhere where my kind is accepted and your kind isn't. Who knows? Uh, oh, there are plenty. The Allfather welcomes his children, I hear. Really? And I look around, I'm like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We love the Allfather uh, in this house. Uh, anyways... You know, 
I can't, we kind of just heard about this place and we were interested and I love I love a challenge, you know. It's, I'm not wanted somewhere. I'm going to try and, you know, check it out anyway. But um seems like an odd reason to take such a risk. <sighs> I mean, my whole life is a risk, am I right? <laughs> he ponders that for a second. He goes, well, can't argue with that. You know, um, yeah, uh, you know, we're here anyway. We thought, you know, we overheard the, the, the guards outside saying that they were waiting for a maintenance crew. And we're like, oh, like, you know, we could maybe try and be a maintenance crew just to check it out. But, you know, we... We're here anyway. We might as well give you a hand finding your bottle. And, oh. um, you know what they say. Curiosity killed the cat. And perhaps the rabbit. I look at Kiara. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kiara's like uncomfortable now. <laughs> um, Is it okay if we go around that way and I kind of point down the rest of the temple behind, like towards the back? behind He's... where they the oracle is is though something you've said has like struck a chord in him and goes oh i think i know where it is oh and he just sort of like waves you off okay. as though with the gesture that you interpret to mean do whatever you want he, he he has moved on to other things okay i'm gonna go and grab clubber and then we're here for i'm trying to remember because we just are trying to get um, yeah, away from the sisters, right? I'm just trying to remember why they, we're uh, coming to this temple. The Blue Widow. Oh! Oh, I didn't write down the name. Who is it we were looking for? Hasim. Ah! Hasim. Poor blind uh, Hasim. Right. Was sup- we heard he was in the med bay, went there, found out that his eyes were completely liquefied, and now is possibly down here in this temple so we're looking for him maybe he's one of these guys and i point at the people praying <laughs> clubber it's crack me up so are you gonna sort of like go closer to the pulpit and try to get a look at some of the acolyte spaces no first i'm gonna uh well actually well should we ask um we think about remind it. me this older older gentleman gilbert thing? gilbert with a y and two l's he left, uh, didn't he? He's like, he's he's something? poking about. You could probably follow him. He's, Kiara, he's he's wandered off as grumpy old men tend to do. Yeah, Kiara's gonna go track him down and gonna see if maybe Gilbert knows or have seen a seam. When you approach him, you startle him again. He has completely forgotten that you were there two seconds ago. <laughs> he goes, yeah. Oh, what? 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 What do you I'm want? S- I'm sorry, but uh, I was just curious if you've seen uh, uh, a gentleman come around these parts in this temple. His name's Hasim. Uh, he has he no might eyes. have, yeah, he might have not had any eyes. Oh, brother Hasim. Oof. Terrible shape that one. Mm. So he's, he uh, was here. He's around here somewhere. Ah, uh, but the, 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 t- 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 take a walk. You'll, you'll, you'll uh, he said. Uh, and he he thinks for a minute, he goes, actually, I think I know where I left it. And he wanders off to somewhere else. He just sort of goes hobbling across to the other side of the temple. Uh, okay, well, Socks, I guess Hasim should be around or he was here. So, yeah. Um, maybe we should grab Clubber and tell him to, to look for Hasim now instead of a bottle. Probably. <laughs> now we don't need to find that. So I'm gonna walk over to Clubber. I'm just gonna be like, hey, hey, Clubber, Clubber, hey, hey, buddy. How's Hi, it going? Socks. Look, Socks. I covered this much area. See, this is where this is where you guys were. I used a page uh-huh. in my diary, uh, so uh-huh. I could I could map it out. So uh-huh. here's here's you, and and Look, here's okay. Kiara, and and these are the X's are at all the places that I checked. I have I found a couple bottles. One was empty. One was almost empty, and then it became empty. That's a long story. Um, mm, I bet. Did you know what was in that bottle? It tasted Before bad. Before you drank it. 
It smelled well, good, but tasted bad. Clubber, I, that's awesome. Uh, but I have I have even better news. That we can knock this out and be done by noon because we can we can we can divide and conquer. No, no, we don't have to look for that anymore. Gilbert Gilbert remembers where he put it. So okay. now, right as now, you say that, you hear Gilbert make a very frustrated sound from across the temple and go, yeah, and he moves on somewhere else and starts rummaging through some more rocks. Um, well, maybe he hasn't found it. Maybe he hasn't. He'll get there. But great news. Hasin was here or he is here. Now he we was? Find it. Yeah, he's here. Where? He, they call him Brother Hasin. So I guess he's a member of this temple. Or brother has seen. Brother has seen. Brother can't see because he doesn't have eyes. Correct. So we got to look for him now. So if you want to continue on your map that you made and see if you can find him around here and I, report I, back. I will go recheck every spot I just did to make sure he's not there. Okay, Clubber. Great. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna turn around to Kiara and be like, okay, I guess we're just gonna. Yeah. Look. I think we should <laughs> probably go up to the Oracle and maybe ask. Do you think the Oracle? I mean, I'm... uh, I don't know if I should ask the Oracle. I feel like that's a. Excuse bad, me, sir. Are you brother Hassan? You've what disturbed an acolyte in prayer, and they sort of wave you off and return to what they were doing. Kiara, I have an idea. Mark on my map. All right, what's your idea? Him. If you go into cat form, could you somehow get under them to check their faces while they're praying? Excuse me, sir. How many fingers am I holding up? I, got, yeah. I gotta go get grab Clover. This is not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> Want to try that? Yeah. I okay. Will I'm gonna I'll, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna um, grab him. While Socks goes to Clubber, Kiara turns into a cat and just slowly starts Socks, um, it's okay. sneaking it, up. If against, he can't give me an answer, he can't one of see. The acolytes praying. Cl Clubber, come right. here. I have a secret to tell you. Oh, yes. Come here, come here, come here. And I like hurry okay. over to the other All side right. of the room <laughs> with so, Clubber. <laughs> as you approach the pulpit, Kiara, uh, the, the feature of, the, of these three creatures sort of come into focus for you. Um, the ones standing on either side, um, they're humanoid creatures with very delicate frames. They are completely bald, and their skin seems to shine like kind of of its own accord. They have these unusually large black eyes set into really high cheekbones, and both of their cheekbones and the ridges of their skulls are sort of punctuated with these strange, like, bony uh, protrusions. And they've been tattooed black, which lends a sort of eerie pattern to their faces. Um, they're completely naked, but their bodies are entirely smooth and featureless from the shoulders down, like a mannequin. Um, mm -hmm. And between the two of them is something that looks human if you don't look for too long. Um, she stands much, much taller than the others. She's clad in robes of black and gold. Um, but beneath the robes, you can see that the entire midsection of her body is missing. Her oh. spine is laid bare from the bottom of her rib cage to the top of her pelvis and her intestines and all those other midsection or or organs are inexplicably missing um she's sick. wearing this massive pauldron made from what appears to be bone and it extends across both her shoulders and is covered in flickering candles uh you can see even from this distance that these are real flame candles not the electric ones that you are used to um her neck is unnaturally long her face is very gaunt and her skin is like barely clinging to her bones an ornate metal plate covers her eyes and on her head is a pointed crown that's gleaming in the candlelight um this crown behind it has three large sort of concentric metal circles that are pierced in all directions by pointed spires and as you get a little bit closer you see that several eyes have been skewered onto these spires, but they appear to be fully functional and sort of dart about watching their acolytes pray. And Kiara's wondering if some of these eyes may be Hasim's eyes? What color and... were Hasim's eyes? 
<laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> yeah, and Kiara's kind of like freaked out because she's never seen anyone like this before. So she kind of just like tries to stay uh, hidden. Um, I actually want to send you guys the full art for this because it the token does not do it justice. <laughs> I'm down. You, the oracle has the pointed crown, you said? Yes. Okay. There's the full art. Whoa. Look at me. Look at all those eyeballs. Bruh. Knock skin one. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that is so cool. That's amazing. That's like some Resident Evil <sighs> village and shit. The Oracle can like see the future, right? Like what are the powers of the Oracle? You don't quite know, and Gilbert did not tell you. But uh, as, oh, sorry. as you sort of, like, walk across the room, you actually see a couple of those eyes look right at you. And Kara's gonna just kind of, like, back up a little bit and get far enough away, and... Um, can I speak to Socks in my cat form, or do I need to transform back? You can, you can, you can speak to her. Okay. Yeah, I go back up to Socks. Um, so Socks, the Oracle has a bunch of eyes, uh, stuck to this metal portion of her. And, um, I think this seems eyes are a part of that because they were looking right at me. You think Hussein's eyes are on her? Yeah. How would I'm they have sure. gotten his eyes? I don't know, but it's super creepy. They looked right at you. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've never seen a seam, but it seems like the eyes were like looking, trying to get help or something was going they on. They looked like scared. It wasn't just like they were yeah. looking at you, like mm -hmm. we see you. It, it wasn't was like, please help they me. They were different from all the other eyes. Look. <gasps> Socks just has a moment of realization. While, so I know, while Kiara was doing that, the whole time that she was gone, I was telling Clubber about the ritual thing and how he does not step forward. That if he steps <laughs> forward, I will be very upset. What if that's part of the ritual? And I point at the oracle. And I'm like, what if the ritual is taking their eyes and putting it on the oracle? Yeah. Um This seems Clever. pretty sketchy. <laughs> I'm just like I'm I'm nervous we're in danger here cuz uh, what if a sorcerer tries to take our eyes? Clubber, do you actually have your arm up like in character? So, yes. <laughs> when you when you put your arm up, the oracle is actually going to notice you. You see one of those additional eyes flick in your direction. And Clubber, put your hand down. Put your hand down. She, uh, she spreads her thin arms very wide. She says, have you come to watch these brothers and sisters climb the ladder? The ascension is about to begin. And then two more sets of arms spread from behind the first, and all six hands you can see end in ghastly long fingers and razor-sharp nails. Ew. Socks is just like... <sighs> really uncomfortable like wants to leave but also really wants to see what's gonna happen Socks should should should, should I should I go talk to her no 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 what stay the, here what stay is here. the ascension I don't know that's what's the name happen. of the ritual but what happens during that ritual I don't, I don't know well she said All they're Gilbert gonna climb the ladder watch. it's not a real ladder I don't think Clubber, what, I think what if they're climbing the ladder to get to the ducks? I don't I don't think that's what it is. Okay, here's what we're gonna here's what we're gonna do, okay, Clover? You are gonna uh and Sox is just very quickly like trying to think of anything uh while he's like, holy shit, we're gonna fucking die. We're gonna fucking die. Uh okay. Uh we're gonna stay here. We're gonna 
Let's just stay here. How far away from the wall are we? Um, you're pretty close to the wall. Um, so there's about a... So the way this temple is laid out, you have about, um... You have a center corridor that's about five feet wide. You have pews on either side of that. And then from the end of the pews to the wall, there's about three feet of space. Mm. Okay. Um, Socks, I, 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 I have a thing. Um, what? The, 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 the head, headache with pictures. Uh, Mem, uh, uh, vision? Uh, I, oh, idea. I and I, you have an idea. Headache I have an, with I have an pictures. I, I have an idea. <laughs> what is your idea? Do we do we know that those eyeballs belong to Hasim? No, we're guessing. How how can we know? Um, I don't, I don't think we we uh, can. We've never seen Hasim's eyes before, so I think it's kind of a stretch to be like, yeah, those are him. Especially if we were told that they were liquefied, but maybe they were liquefied and then the oracle somehow made them whole again. I don't, I don't, Clubber. I really don't know this stuff. Socks. Mm-hmm. What? What if? What? What if I caused a distraction and Irara stole the eyeballs? Mm-mm. You know, no, what? I was we... actually thinking about stealing those eyeballs. I'm not... no, see, no, see, see, Why? we can, we, let's have a vote. We can vote. <laughs> no, no, we're not having a vote because I'm going to lose. I mean, the only uh, thing I'm worried about Sox, is that's the, the point Oracle of a vote coming is. after me right I as I get the eyeball. We are I have a, I have a plan die. for that. I have a plan for that, Kia. I can take care of the Oracle. Okay, but then when we have the eyeballs, like, we still don't have Haseem, so... Why is this an idea right now? <laughs> that is not why we're here! You know that what? That is not why we're here. Roll me a perception check. Who? All three of you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, like, actually scared. Like, Rachel's I was, scared. I was totally thinking about stealing the eyes. Perception check? Yes. Uh, I am 15. 23. Wow, in 18. my fit of fear, so I am perceptive. Socks with a 23, you can take a one look at that oracle and know that the three of you will fucking die if you try. I know. I feel it. We are her. not. We, if we do anything bad in this building, we are going to fucking die. I promise you. What and if I'm we don't? not lying, hear, Clubber. Hear me out. Hear me out, Socks. What if we don't do anything bad? What if we make an offer? No, no, no. We don't know what the Oracle wants. Yeah, we do. She you wants can say, eyeballs. Yeah, take whatever you want. You're not giving away your eyeballs, Clubber. You no, I, no, I, no, no, no. We have three perfectly good bodies back in that alley. That's true. Socks kind of steps back and is like, holy shit, that is actually kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> but they were chained to the wall. No, those were the guards. Socks. No, the oh, the people I killed. The ones that we killed. And then Clubber's gonna get emotional remembering that he killed them and didn't want to, and he's gonna start crying now. I think their bodies are still behind that dumpster. Didn't we leave them there? Yeah, we left them there, yeah. and he, now he's not with his mom. But how are we gonna get them past those guards if we told them that we were maintenance, and then we bring in a dead body? We don't bring in the body, we, we could bring say in the it's an eyes. Offering for the oracle. We're gonna take the eyes out ourselves? No, we use Cosmo. I'm not putting oh Cosmo through that shit. Cosmo, will you take one for the team, buddy? <laughs> Cosmo, he's he's a little bit quiet for a second. <laughs> and then you see a little uh a little volume icon pop up on his display that goes down quite a bit as he lowers <laughs> his own volume he says um i don't think that will be necessary he says it seems right over there what and you see sort of in the back and in, in a in a pew that's sort of cast in shadow um you see someone who is just hunched over in the candlelight Clubber, you did a whole search of the perimeter and you didn't notice that? 
Wow, Clover. I was looking at the walls. I see. I. Why would Hasin be on the walls? <laughs> Why would the bottle be on the walls? Well, you start with the walls and then you work inward. Okay. All right. You, it's look, process look, of it's process don't... of elimination, socks. See, you you start outwards and you idea. move inwards. <laughs> they didn't practice the application of said idea. <laughs> well, it's flawless. Okay, Clubber, this is great because now we don't have to go and steal the eyeballs. We don't have to die. This but is if, awesome. But if I they're really Hasim's have... eyes, shouldn't we get them back? No, 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 no. They well, we no should probably Hasim's ask eyes. him first if, you know, those, if his eyes were taken by the Oracle. So let's you go guys... up to him and ask. Do you guys remember uh, why we need Hasim? Was it Uzu that wanted Hasim? I'm still thinking about Lev. I can't think of anything else. Uh, Cl Clover is going to turn to Cosmo very quickly. And he's going to ask, excuse me, Cosmo. How yes. can you be so certain that that is Hasim? I would know that face anywhere. I mean, Cosmo? Wasn't Hasim um, Uzu's partner? I'm trying to remember. He Cosmo, was. Who? Um, who what, do you, I'm sorry. I'm all over the place today. I'm, I'm trying to open my out, notes. I guess you could say, but why do we need Hasim again? He uh he takes a moment. He goes, mission brief. Rescue Hazel and Naomi Keating. Mission brief. Rescue, find, rescue. locate, and determine the loyalty status of Hasim and Mad Mel. Oh, so we, we need to get him back to the ship. Hasin is still loyal to this uh, group. Uh, okay. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's go talk to uh, yeah. Hasin. Socks is very yeah. reluctant to go talk because he is not prepared to see a face without eyes in it. Um. Can I roll perception very quickly? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm. Would a 15 let me know that Socks is very on edge? Yeah. Okay. Um, knowing that Socks is very on edge, I'm going to start scratching behind the ears. I thought you were going to pick me up. <laughs> I was prepared to be like, ugh! <laughs> you throw me on your shoulders? Like I'm some. No, I'm going to. Uh, 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 Clubber is going to start scratching behind the ears and then start moving forward towards a seam with just a little bit of force behind the hand to kind of guide Socks over to the pew. Socks is like not into it at first, but like as they get closer, he's like, all right. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. <laughs> and then because he's so relaxed, he closes his eyes and he's like, I don't even have to worry about seeing his empty head. I can just sit right here. <laughs> it's just not and then with move. that, Clubber is going to go sit on the pew next to Hussein. All right. So in the candlelight, you can just barely see that it, it, it sort of illuminates his bronze skin. And he does turn his head towards you, but the top half of his face is covered by a really colorful, colorful headscarf. Well, let me drag all of you guys onto the map real quick. I'm going to put you on this side. Clover's massive token. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I drank my and milk growing Hasim. up. All right. So Hasim does turn his his head towards you, but the top half of his face is covered by a really cover, really colorful headscarf. Um, and as though he has some sort of sixth sense, he says, "Did Mel send you after me?" Socks like wakes up. We are uh, uh, looking for Mel. Hmm. Mel's deep in the station by now. We we were actually looking for you too. Who sent you? Uzu. Uzu? <laughs> that old fuck. I should have known they'd send him for me eventually. We're here to rescue you. I'm sorry. I cannot go back with you. Can't oh, you see we're trying to help? Oh, no. No, my place is here now. You you have no idea what I've done. I can't go back. Uh, you 
the the door's right there and it's not guarded. You can. I can leave. I simply don't want to. What have you done? He gets a little bit quiet for a second. He goes, oh, I suppose it doesn't matter now. They'd have my head either way. Are you still loyal to Zoo? They won't see it that way. Who's they? Dom, Uzu, the rest of them. Oh. Um, Clubber's gonna lean in very closely to, uh, to him and just kind of be like, if, if I, if I confess to you, will you confess to us what you've done? Perhaps. Sox is just gonna look at Clever. Like, oh no. <laughs> He's about to relive. Dear dear diary. We made it to Endline Station. It was quite a trip. Stepping out of the ship for the first time, I was hit with the aromas of fried food and chemicals just like mom used to make. There was a nice boy who tried to steal Sox's snacks, but Tarara, being the amazing friend she is, stopped him, got the food back. We got to drink, and I was able to count cards. This is... This is a confession? It... It's a long one, I think. It's my, it's my diary. Detail. Mm. I'm sorry. She's just gonna look down. Would you? Would you rather? Re no, sorry. <laughs> he says, "You mean my eyes? Curse uh, my eyes." I thought that if I took them out, I would stop seeing it. You wanted them out. Did the oracle take your what? eyes? What is it that no. you see? visions the horror all over all over and he actually begins to cry he begins to sob but no tears come out he says but it's still there it's in my dreams and i relive it over and over and over i'm sorry what did I you know see? how hard that is he uh he actually he holds out his hands and he says don't you see i have I have blood on my hands. It'll never come clean. Are, are the hands actually clean? Lap. Yeah, they're clean. There's nothing on them. But he drops them into his lap and he says, that poor girl. I poor I Hazel. think I can assist you. Ha um, Hazel? Did you just, did you just say Hazel? Yes. What, what, hap what happened to Hazel? Cosmo, can you please Hazel clean Keenan? his hands? Cosmo, yeah, you just blast him with air, and it actually, oh when he blasts him, it actually, like, sort of lifts up his headscarf for a moment, and you do see, like, the two hollows in his face. Yeah. Um, they, they, they look pretty nasty. They look like they've kind of been, like, chemically burned. You said, you said Hazel, just now. He just sort of nods. And he starts apologizing, mostly muttering to himself. Hazel, I've seen Hazel's alive. I saw her. You saw her? That's, that's not possible. It's we, not possible. We, we rescued, rescued her from the blue-armed lady. Her. He starts to hyperventilate. And it's he starts, like, rocking back and forth in his pew, and he starts muttering to himself. And by this time, he's, he's distressed enough um, that another one of the acolytes approaches the four of you and, and sort of gently lays a hand on his shoulder and says, Peace now, Brother Haseen. They shoot you sort of a bitter look and shake their heads and say, Disregard these indecorous guests. I'm going to look at socks and say, Is indecorous good or bad? <laughs> it's bad, Clover. It's, it's not good. And then, very suddenly, as though a vision has sort of befallen him, he just begins to shriek. 
He's pulling at his headscarf. He's clawing at his own face. And he says, I watched her bleed. I watched her die. Is he harming himself? You can see, like, scratches kind of on his face, but his nails aren't that long to the point that he would be drawing blood. Is the Hazel that we rescued a fake? What if someone, like, transformed into her? Because the scene seems to be pretty... Can I about what happened? Can I restrain him from harming himself? Yeah, you can Clo- restrain him because Clover is concerned. But there is what one of the acolytes has already started to like hush him and try to help him to his feet, and they say, "Come, brother, please, just ascend with us." And that seems to calm him down a little bit. Is he still what is- sitting there though? Excuse me, but what is this ascension? Can you give us some more information on it? Um, the acolyte who's comic kid looks at you and says, the only way to know is to see. Yes? Well, yeah, I think we're just going to have to wait for Haseem to ascend and see what that if, is. If the, if the only way to know is to see... How can Asim ascend? He he doesn't have any eyes anymore. I just okay. Um, Asim, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I brought. I I'm sorry. I upset you. But I I do have to ask again. Um, and you don't have to tell me anything. You don't have to tell me anything at all. Um, but did you did you watch her? Hazel, uh, die? Like, actually? So, one of one of the acolytes is sort of, like, whispering in his ear and guiding him, trying to get him to, you know, stand and come towards the pulpit. Um, but the last thing he says is he sort of lets them lead him along. He says, I see it every night. And he, um... He lets the acolyte lead him away, and he joins a line um, where several of the other members of the temple have, have sort of queued up in front of the glowing fountain at the center of the room, and he takes his place at the end of the line. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sit and look at all of them and just say to both Clover and Kiara, I think the ascend part is that they die. Yeah, that's what I was getting from it as well. I think we're about to watch like six people die. We we need we need to help Hasim. I don't. Yeah, think we didn't we get can. much out of him. I don't. Didn't... I don't think we can anymore. But there's something going on with Hazel, and I think yeah, that's that the creepy. most important thing we got out of this. So as you're you're sort of talking to each other, the seraphim uh, both step down from the pulpit, and and the two of them take their places on either side of the fountain, and then the oracle steps down and stands in front of the fountain, um, and each of the seraphim reaches uh, to the floor and picks up a large water pot, and the oracle spreads all six arms very wide. It says, "It's time, my children. May the ladder find you worthy of its climb." And the first acolyte steps up to the lip of the fountain and kneels. And the oracle takes one of her hands and lifts his face and takes her fingers and plucks his eyes out. And then ushers him into the pool. He turns and faces the congregation. Well, can't really look at them anymore. Um... But with blood still streaming down his face, he says, Bless me, nucleic mother. And she says, I await you at the top top rung, sweet lamb, and nods to her seraphim. They each dip their water pots into the fountain's flow and then lift them and start pouring this glowing liquid down onto his head. He begins to shake, and his skin starts to look like it's glowing for a moment, 
but then it turns a very angry red and starts to peel as though it's burning away. Um, he cries out, and you cannot tell whether it's in pain or whether it's in ecstasy. Um, he falls to his knees, and the seraphim pick him up from the fountain and lay him gently down on the altar. And this is just one of the random Yeah, acolytes. this is just, just okay. one of the acolytes. Socks, I think the latter is a metaphor. I I think you're right. I think you're right. What so if... are we supposed to save Hasim? Because it looks like this what? he's um not gonna be alive for much longer. What if he doesn't die? What if this glowing substance is some kind of, you know, it'll only work if you're worthy or whatever. Is... Roll me a perception check. Okay. Or a religion check. Your choice. Oh. I'm proficient in perception, so I'm going to go with that one. Well, that was a bad 23. one. 23. <laughs> you are rolling like crazy today. Sox is <laughs> on his shit. He's so fucking freaked out that he's Wait just for not missing a thing. <laughs> Clubber thinks they're just going for a dip in the kiddie pool. Um, <laughs> that checks out for Clubber, to be fair. <laughs> Clubber's but checking Sox... to make sure he packed his swim shorts. Sox and Kiara, the two of you actually notice that the guy on the altar is still alive. You can see him breathing, in spite of the absolutely, like, critical condition that he's in. You can see him breathing, and you remember what Jones said to you in the med bay about how they have seen that. patients come through who have sustained injuries due to this ritual. I do remember that, actually. Okay. But, but, but while, you're, while you're looking at this, the next acolyte steps to the fountain, steps in, asks for blessings from the oracle, and they repeat the ritual plucking out the eyes, dipping the pots in the fountain, pouring them over the body. Um, but this time, the reaction is much more violent. Deep sores open all over her body. Um, she shrieks and she collapses almost instantly, and her whole body begins to smoke. Um, she seizes violently for a couple of seconds and then falls completely still. The seraphim lift her from the fountain just like before, but then deposit her somewhere behind the day, the altar. And she's not breathing. She's not. The I oracle think that just one sort worked. of the oracle just sort of clicks her tongue and says, hmm. She was unworthy. Damn. What a shame. Oh. And you realize given how perceptive you are in this moment, you start to think that maybe what's in the fountain is highly irradiated. Um, I think, I think Hussein might be in trouble now, um, actually. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly update Clubber on what we both saw, <laughs> so he's up to speed. Yeah, probably a good idea. And tell him that if Hussein isn't worthy, then he will die. If he is worthy, then he will live, but he'll be very hurt. Do we, do we go get him? We can't. I, I don't... I, I'm, There's no I'm way to know if he's worthy or not, because we don't know him that well. What, what, if what if we do a distraction and then grab him and run? I don't... I think if we go anywhere near there, we're going to die. That, if we try and disrupt this ritual, we will die. I don't think we should do that. I think what we have to do is just see if he I think we lives. just have to wait. What if the reason why she died well, I probably don't know um who the acolyte was because I didn't see. But if I'm like, what if that last one died because they weren't altered? What if you have to be altered in order to withstand this weird substance? I don't Think Hussein is altered. I don't think so either. Cl Clubber, like, 
Clubber, you can definitely see, feel, see some anguish on his face with what's going on. And he's just going to softly say to Sox, Sox, I, ju- I just took a life. I feel like I need to save one. Can that one be yourself? I, I'll save who you tell me to. So as you're deliberating, you actually see Gilbert approach the altar. And while this batshit insane ritual is going on, he starts digging around behind the pulpit. He's just rummaging and he's just digging. No one really seems to notice him. Um, Because Gilbert's Gilbert's been a staple of this temple for many, many years. He's basically invisible at this point. He's rummaging back there behind the pulpit. And he disappears for... He hunches so far over that he disappears for a second. And then you see his arm shoot up with a bottle in it. (laughs) And he goes, Ha-ha! I knew it was here somewhere. And the Oracle just sort of waves him away. Just doesn't doesn't seem that perturbed that he he is not reading the energy of the room right now. She 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 just waves him away. Like that's that's nice. Please go go play. So he takes the bottle and he tucks it to his chest. And uh he just starts to see his way out of the temple. Um, what if he we found ask Gilbert if, like, he thinks he seems worthy to survive the ritual? Probably the best idea we have. Because I mean, I think Gilbert yeah. knows. Hasim are, are we, al- are we able to you. catch Gilbert before he leaves so we can talk to him? Yeah, he's walking up the center aisle. He's walking right okay. by y'all. He's just hobbling. He 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 can only go so he's going as fast as a man of his age and his stature can go. Gilbert can, can excuse me. Can you <laughs> tell us more about this ritual? Oh, well, I uh, it's not to my taste really. Uh that you you see you, you see the green stuff? That's uh it's basically nuclear waste. Nuclear is. waste. If I un- if I understand correctly, the first acolyte lived the ritual. Correct. He's nodding emphatically. How? Is it like? Is it like a biological thing, or? I'm sure, like they believe that you know those that are worthy survive the ritual and that kind of thing. But we're just thinking about. Um, you know, maybe he's the only one that'll live, you know? Uh, he, he considers your question and he goes, oh, well, and he pops his bottle of hooch open <laughs> and there's an instant, like, chemical tar smell coming out of this bottle. This is, this is, this was definitely made in a toilet. Um, Ew. he, uh, and, and he takes a long swig and he goes, ah, oh, well, I, I'm 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 no scientist, uh, but but, and he's like trying to find the words. He says, "Ah, oh, well, basically, hmm. these alters once once you reach a certain level of your DNA going off the rails, uh, exposure to this kind of thing can sort of make the process continue." He takes another swig. He goes, basically. They're trying to evolve themselves in a single generation. Oh, so it, this ritual helps them evolve more, you're saying? It, 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 it breaks down the DNA further. It creates more mutations. It, ugh, this, that, and the other thing. I, you know, I have a weird question for you, but it looks like Hasin's gonna ascend, try and ascend as well. Uh, do you think, do you think he'll survive it? He goes, oh, well, I, I don't know anything about that, but Cosmo's kind of tugging at your cloak. Cosmo? Yes, I, I understand that Brother Hasim has, 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 has been exposed to some radiation during his rescue missions to Terra Prime, but 
I'm not convinced it would be enough to classify him as a true altered. I think, I think you're, I think you're really right about that, Cosmo. I don't, I just, I don't know if we can do anything now. I think we, I think I wasted our time. And Sox kind of looks down and his ears just like slump even further if it's possible. Clubber is going to crouch down, uh, like to Cosmo's level. So like real, really, really crouch down. He'd be like, Cosmo, it, what I'm going to ask you is going to be a hard question to answer. Do you think we need to save him or do we need to leave him? Cosmo gets really quiet for an awkwardly long amount of time. And uh, he says, well, I'm not really programmed to answer these sort of things. I, I understand the mission brief, but it seems that perhaps the current situation is not aligned with the expectations that we had when we made the mission brief. Clover, Socks is still like looking at the floor. Yes, Socks. I think the way that we have to save Hasin is to let him ascend. Whether he lives or dies, I think that's what we have to let him do. I don't Gilbert butts in very brutally and goes, well, I know what I'm gonna do. He's already slurring his words. He said, I found what I came for. And I'm going to throw it over my shoulder. And I'm going to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay. Sound, sound, sounds good, Gilbert. And he takes another long swig and he just keeps on hobbling down the aisle. Uh, Kiara's still in cat form, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Clubber is going to, like, I mean, he's he's got some tears welling up right now because he, he knows, like, this is a risk and what is going to happen. He doesn't want to see anyone else get harmed today. Um, He is going to just quietly, without saying a word, he's going to uh, pick up Kara in cat form. Uh, He's going to pick up socks, and he's just going to, with his head down, slowly start walking out the door. And as you walk out the door, you hear the screams of yet another acolyte stepping into the fountain and attempting to ascend. Uh, Clubber, shouldn't we stay and see if Hasim lives or dies? Through, uh, through the through the t- through the tears in in his eyes, Clubber's just gonna say. <laughs> Does that matter to the mission brief? Well, I guess my only thought was if Hasim lives, maybe we could somehow bring him back to Uzu and get more answers, but... He's not loyal to them anymore. Yeah. He's too guilty. Determine that. (sighs) Gilbert is flinging the temple doors open in front of you. Let's just go. Clubber's just going to keep on walking. He is not okay with it. (laughs) You, uh, you walk down the corridor between the sets of pews as the, the sounds of the ritual continue behind you. Um, and you make it back out into the hallway. Your eyes adjust to the dim but fluorescent light. Um, and as the door shut behind you and you continue back down the hallway the way you came uh, the guards shout after you uh, thanks for fixing the vents in there it was starting to smell like death no problem our pleasure all, all in a good day's work Clover says nothing and you find yourselves back in the hallway, empty, mostly dark, and but a safe distance away from 
the temple you just left. Well, let's never go back there again. It was my fault. Clo and Sox is just like swaying around as Clubber walks. <laughs> just like, just not even trying to hold himself as he usually does. It's just. But does this mean that you need to question Hazel now? Because I'm thinking, well, I don't know, what if a fake? It's possible. But I don't, I think we should keep that information to ourselves for. A bit, because who knows? Uh, Hussein could have been... Could have thought that he killed Hazel and... You know, Hazel lived. But... He did seem kind of crazy. He just got his eyes taken out, though, didn't he? Like, earlier... What was it earlier that he was it up is... in the med bay? Yeah, this yeah, day? he had been yep. in in the med bay like a couple of days before you got to him in the temple. And how long do we know how long Hazel and Naomi were in the Blue Rose Motel or in Box Four Hundred Four? They received the call that they were back on Alpha Seri or they were back on Inline Station ten days ago. You have no idea if they were there before then, uh, but contact was made ten days ago. Hmm. Well. I don't know. I think we've had enough, uh... You know? Uh, we head back socks to is the just ship? so scattered. Uh, you know what I'd like to do? And it, Socks is gonna try and, like, lighten the mood a little bit if he, if he can. I'd like to get another cloak, I think. You know, because yeah, mine's kind of... Can covered in guts now and kind of just glares at clubber we can stop through the market on the way back clubber is just gonna silently turn towards the market and start walking in that direction <laughs> all right you start heading back towards level 99 and the din of the crowd grows louder and louder and louder until you find yourself back in the middle of the hustle and bustle of the market stalls the food stalls and everything else hey clubber yeah. do you mind putting me down for a second i'm gonna go get myself a fish from that uh yeah i'm just gonna that, I'm, uh, I'm gonna set everybody down <laughs> Clubber, do you want to come get a new cloak with me? We can get you a new t-shirt. Because he's still wearing the one with the big heart on it, isn't he? He is. He's looked absolutely ridiculous this entire time. <laughs> oh, that makes it so much better. Clubber, do you want to get a clean shirt? I'll buy you a clean shirt. Are you sure? Do you want anything? You hungry? I can get you a fish at that uh, cart hungry? I'm going to go to. Here, Kiara, are you approaching the cart in cat form? Yeah, I was thinking about it because I kind of want to just snatch up the, <laughs> the fish without <laughs> paying for it. So <laughs> the person working the market stall actually like sees you in cat form and, and just grins and just tosses you a fish. Oh, <laughs> Kiara just like starts purring and is all happy. <laughs> Brings the fish back in her mouth on Clubber's shoulder and starts eating it. <laughs> and uh, Cosmo, even though he can't feel emotions, he seems to understand that the mood of, of the room has changed. And he says, well, <sighs> I think we should go to the crab shack. The crab shack? You're hungry, Clubber is right? going to immediately just like stand up just out of absolute nowhere. Uh, Kiara is probably going to fall off my shoulders, like literally <laughs> shoot up. Cosmo, I forgot your arm at the temple. It's 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 fine. You can make me another one. Clubber's just going to sit back down. I'm sorry. 
Uh, you, you did good today. I'm just gonna walk to that stall that I bought my last cloak at. Say hi. I'm back. <laughs> mm. Um, seems your fortunes have fallen, my dear. <sighs> my, my fortune. Right. I. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. I get. I guess you could. Uh, you could say that. Um, I. I my cloak kind of got a bit wrecked. Um, mm, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, I was not very happy about it because I really like this cloak. Do you happen to have another one by chance? I of like course. Of course. She goes, uh, she goes digging through, um, and she, like, picks up one thing, goes, mm, no, and she sort of throws it over her shoulder. She picks up another thing, she goes, mm, no, throws it over her shoulder. Um, but she finally comes up with another cloak. Um, not velvet this time. This one is sort of black satin. Ooh. And it is trimmed with a very sort of iridescent uh, type thread. Socks is Will this do? Stoked. I love it. Yes. Of course. How much for this one? She she slides it across the, the bar of the stall and she says, mm, I can read on your face that you're troubled. Take this one for free. No, I, I can't, I can't, I can't take this. I, Socks is just frantically looking around, like. Free I, fish I, and a free cloak? It's, it's our night I tonight. I don't, you don't have to. It's really okay, I can pay for it. She grins and she sort of like leans her whole body over the, the barrier of the cell and she goes. This isn't even my income. It doesn't matter to me what happens to this store. I just do it. For fun. You hear so much gossip, you know? No, oh, probably. <laughs> but she says it in a way that makes you think that whatever she does do for money may not be on the up and up. It's good, Chief. Me too. <laughs> Relatable. Uh... Yeah, this is my my first time down here, and uh, it's quite a place, you know. <sighs> the the station takes what it wants and leaves the rest. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Takes all she's... kinds of kinds, I suppose. Yeah, she's the one that gave us the fortunes. Before she is, we yes. went to the temple. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wrote down my fortune and I read that right after you said it and almost had a heart attack as to how accurate it was. <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what card did you draw? I can't even remember. The Hierophant. The oh, natural shit. law is there for a reason. Oh. You may need spiritual guidance at some point or have a visit from a spirit. Bro, I didn't even plan that. That's just that's just a happy accident. I, I was just like, Ooh. holy shit. That's... <laughs> Oh, the heat! Oh, Ooh. my God! Oh, my God! Um, have you heard? Sox is just gonna, like, lean an arm on the thing, because she's still, like, hunched over the, the bear, the, the, the thing, right? Mm hmm Just gonna lean on it, like, have you heard anything good today? And she's, like, looking around, like, you know. She says, well, frankly, most of what I heard is about the three of you. Oh. Seems you've gotten yourselves into a situation. Gossip is always fun when it's not about yourself. Oh, mm. Yeah, just like rolls, her eye, rolls his eyes. You know, we've been through it, you know? The station, ugh, so much can happen. What have you heard uh, lately about the sisters? She, um, she sort of leans in and she goes, wow, speaking of the sisters, hmm, Margaret Marie is fucking Mary May's husband. You're joking. No. Who told you that? Mm. So, my cousin is a friend of Margaret May's brother-in-law. Mm. Ah. Mm. Of course, you heard about it then. 
I've also heard that the Santa Sangras are uh, starting a new circuit down near the Ruby Den. By the Ruby Den? Yes. Really? I've never heard of this group before. <laughs> I feel so goes, out of the loop. She goes, where do you hail from? Originally, not from here? From here, no, not from no, here? no. We've only been here a few days. Mm, mm. It's always rough in the start, and she kind of like pats your hand. As though everything that you're going through is just... Normal. The natural result of being <laughs> in a lawless place, like in yeah. Line Station. She goes, you'll get used to it. What was that group called that you just said? The Santa Sangras. The Santa Sangras. Well, if you're here, then surely you hail from Alpha Ceres, right? Yeah. You don't seem like Venusians. No, no. Hmm. Well, if you've been lucky enough to avoid the West End all this time, good for you. Um, she says they're, they're frankly one of the most dangerous groups back there. They're, um, they're violent. Um, but they, you know, they, they run the black market here. They run a lot of the, the drug trading rings, the fighting rings. At the, at the sound of fighting rings, uh, Clubber is just getting, not like, he's not going to say anything, but you're like, you're going to be able to see, he just kind of goes. He perks up. <laughs> he perks up a little bit before he just like gets back down to his sad state. She notices that you that you like pay a little bit of attention, and she goes, "I'm sure you would do very well there, darling." He appreciates that. He's had a tough day. And she says, she leans in very closely, and she says, "Would you like some tea?" I think we have some time. I would love yeah. some tea. Yes. And she, uh, she sort of, like, she rummages around. It seems like whatever is ha this is a very small stall. So, realistically, she should not have as much stuff stored under this stall as she does. <laughs> she might have, like, a pocket dimension of some sort, but she just starts pulling out, like, an electric kettle, pulling out cups, pulling out a box of, like, little assorted teas. And she goes, take your pick. I have jasmine, I have chamomile, I have black, I have green, I have purple, I have dragon fruit. I'll take green. She pulls out a bag of green tea. Pick your favorite. She thinks for a second. And she sort of digs through this line of purple ones and pulls one out from the very, very back. And she says, pomegranate. Oh, I love pomegranate. Socks has no fucking idea what a pomegranate is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just trying really hard to, like, be this lady's best friend. To get more information. But it's also really having a great time. <laughs> and she looks at you, Clubber, and she says, and you, dear, would you like some tea? Good. Could I, could I have a cup of white pomegranate, please? She says, well, I could offer you that, but let me offer you something else. And she pulls out a pack of, like, honey, lemongrass, chamomile, and she says, you seem troubled. This will soothe the soul. Is that okay? And she just sets about making tea. She sets the kettle to boil. And it only takes a few minutes. Um, she steeps the tea for a moment. And then she passes each one of you a piping hot cup of warm tea. Thank you. It's really kind of you. I, I greatly appreciate your kind gesture. Thank you. She nods and says, of course. And she sets about making her own cup. But you... You see her pop open a small pill of what you recognize to be Dex, which is basically a, an amphetamine, and she sprinkles it in her own tea, and as she goes to drink it, she winks at you and says, we can't be without our vices, can we? Oh. 
Do your thing. <laughs> this bitch is just high and listening to gossip all the time. She's living her best life, really. Living the dream. <laughs> also, this is a total side note. Uh, nothing related. I just wanted to say that at the bottom of Foundry, there's the hot bar. Mm -hmm. You can drag your weapons and your abilities into the hot bar if you want. To. Oh! I just noticed that. I'm glad you said that because I forget that that's an option. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing that. That is super cool, and I am currently doing that right now. Um, so as we're drinking tea, uh, what am I gonna say? I'm debating. <laughs> um, yeah, hold on. Cl Clubber's gonna l let me let me do a roll quick. <laughs> That didn't work. Oh, cause I misspelled roll. <laughs> oh, my cat's here. Hello, B. Oh. She's just walking in. She's probably gonna yep. walk around um, and leave again. Cl Clubber is going to uh, kind of like hold out his cup of tea after she puts the, the thingy in it and just say, what, what when, it, when in Rome? She is more than happy to apply. She, uh, <laughs> She grabs another pill of Dex and she pops it into your tea for you. I'm just gonna. <laughs> Clubber's had a rough day. <laughs> what the fuck? Socks has no fucking idea what drugs are, and it's just like <laughs> knows that like they do people do bad things for them and with them and whatever, but it has no idea other than that. It's just like. Clubber's just gonna start sipping his tea. Yeah, you sip your tea. It's got a little bit of extra kick to it. You can kind of feel it like right here in the back of your jaw. So it's it's a little bit bitter, um, but it also sort of numbs your tongue a little bit. And uh, you feel yourself like sort of reinvigorated. You just feel like you've had one too many sodas, like coffee that was a little bit too strong. Um, you feel very alert, very focused. Um, the the bad feelings in the brain kind of tone down a little bit. Oh no! Um, and so for the next hour, you will have um a plus one to all strength checks, but a negative two to all wisdom checks. Okay. Is that for everybody? No, that's just for the one who did drugs. Oh. <laughs> Damn it, Clover. Clover's feeling much better right now. Well, at least he's sad. And uh, your movement speed increases by five feet for the next hour as well. Go fast. Socks, so, do you think we should get to Uzu and tell him what happened? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. You're bouncing because you're so large. Your bouncing is actually starting to rattle her stall a little bit. I mean, couldn't we use Cosmo to, like, send a message through his systems to maybe update Uzu? We can maybe FaceTime? Hey, Cosmo. Yes? Are you able to send Uzu a message for us from this distance? I can certainly try. Can you try and tell him that we found out that Hasin does not seem to be loyal anymore. And that he's, uh, might be possibly dead. dead. <laughs> Make sure to tell him that we still are loyal. He, uh, he, 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 he beeps and sort of words away and says, I'm gonna, I'll find a place that's a little bit less crowded so my signal isn't blocked. And he just okay. sort of weaves through the crowd and disappears. And now that it's 1 a.m., that is actually the last of what I have prepped for you this evening. Ooh. Ooh. Man. Wait, so, so, wait, right. so you're just going to leave me strung out on drugs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have oh witnessed a horrific incident. You that have was... done drugs in response. That was rough. That was unreal. That yes. was rough. 
claps for Av. Claps for Av. Oh that my was gosh, unbelievable. that was amazing. <laughs> that was so stressful. Ooh, <laughs> I actually was so creepy. Was actually upset yeah, i had legitimate internal conflicts with how clubber was handling the situation yeah i was not expecting socks to go in the direction that he went because i was so upset about the situation socks just could not function yeah because like what else were you oh, gonna man. do like throw him over your shoulder and carry what? him out 